So all of the worst generation have pretty fascinating hobbies. For example, Dears Drake studies astrophysics for fun, whilst Arusha's hobby is lovemaking, which no, I am not making up, that is 100% canon. But the most craven hobby of all time comes in the form of Eustace Kidd, who is a YouTube fanatic. So much so that his hair is entirely composed of subscribe buttons from his favorite channels. And this one right here is the subscribe button for the Grand Line Review, the pushing of which will grant you regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we are going to be taking the time out of our day to talk about the worst generation, quite specifically in regards to the old R word being ranking. However, doing so without any form of objective measure like power or prestige would be pretty difficult at this point in One Piece, so I've elected to take a different route to help us ascertain a conclusion. And so I put up a straw poll on YouTube asking people to vote for their favorite member of this group, and we are going to go through the results of this glorified popularity poll here today. So right off the bat, this is not a power ranking, be aware of that. So this time around, we got about 2,200 votes, so hopefully that paints a solid picture of the One Piece fan base. And in fact, I think that is indeed a statistically significant sample size. But in any case, I do really enjoy knowing all of your collective thoughts. And let me just say, there are some surprising results within this poll. But with that out of the way, let's begin with 12th and last place, which is unfortunately going to be Massacre Soldier Killer. I mean, I say unfortunately, but I suppose it was pretty expected, because apart from Zoro, Killer is the only member of the worst generation who is not a captain of his own crew. And as a result, he does very much often end up in the background. But I don't know, I would have said that a certain event might have gotten him into 11th, maybe even 10th place. But honestly, this poll is so crazy that I really should not try to apply my own personal logic. I will say that Killer is one of the members who exudes a pure shot of coolness. He has a sleek design and a blade focused fighting style, so it is hard to go wrong with him. In any other shonen manga, he would be a definite fan favorite, but there is an awful lot of competition in One Piece. But I do think that if this were a personal ranking, I would place Killer a little bit higher, although I completely understand why he lands here. I mean, that's just what's going to happen when you spend most of your existence in the series, overshadowed by the presence of Eustace Kid, and spending the majority of his time behind a mask probably doesn't help either. Now let's move on to our first crazy situation of this poll because 11th and 10th places are actually a tie between Scratch Manapu and Basil Hawkins, who each received 45 votes apiece. And I think that the appropriate word to describe this would be flabbergasted. I mean, I can kind of understand Apu because he's been one of the least focused upon members, but Hawkins? We've actually seen a fair bit of this guy. Even the anime events have gotten to dive into Hawkins quite a bit, and he has a truly fascinating ability when it comes to his seemingly basic devil fruit in combination with the ever intriguing tarot cards, which I still have no real explanation for how it is they work. That's a pretty great mystery of One Piece right there because this world does not subscribe to magic. Plus I think he has quite a nice design, so I had no idea that he was this unpopular, although that's not necessarily what this poll measures because you did only get to choose one result, but I suppose I would have thought there would be more passionate Hawkins fans out there than there are. To be fair, I guess he has a fairly stoic black hole of personality compared to so many others, so Hawkins may not be as instantly favorable. To counter that argument though, Scratch Manipu is kind of the exact opposite in that regard. He is personality incarnate with another really fun devil fruit. Another really fun mysterious devil fruit at this point as well. And he certainly never fails to entertain me when he is featured, although I suppose that's the problem here. We just haven't really had the time to delve into this character properly yet. And admittedly, I will say that Apu has a very Oda design. He went weird. He went very weird, and I really like that. I love that there is nobody else in this world, or likely any other world, who looks like Apu, and I have no doubt in the future that he will likely gain a hell of a lot more fans. But for now, it's time to elevate ourselves to number nine, which would be Mad Monk Arouge with 58 votes. And despite the fact that we really haven't seen much of Arouge either, he definitely does leave a lasting impression with his towering physique and eternal smile. Plus, he does have a fair bit of notoriety, having been credited as the man who defeated Charlotte Snack, as well as meeting Kaido on the Sky Island. And in fact, he is a Sky citizen himself, which adds quite a bit of intrigue to Mr. Arouge. I can see why people would like him, I certainly do. And he's one of the worst generation members that I would be most keen to learn more about. Although whenever I think of Arouge, my mind always wanders to the times when Oda drew him as both a woman and as a quote unquote cute person. So in a bizarre turn of events, Arouge with a bow in his hair is more or less my head cannon at this point. Although I still think it's kind of crazy that Arouge has outranked Hawkins, but hey, the public have spoken. In eighth place now, we have Mr. Dinosaur himself, Diaz Drake, who is indeed an Allosaurus, not a Tyrannosaurus, as I stated in my very old Worst Generation One Piece 101 video, and all of you commenters will never let me forget that. In my defense though, at the time his devil fruit had not been revealed, and being the uncultured swine I am, I just made assumptions because why not be a T-Rex man? In any case, Drake is one of the most fascinating members of this cohort, because apart from Bonnie, he is by far the most mysterious in terms of motivation and goals. Ever since he first appeared, Drake has consistently held my attention, because I really like the idea of an ex-marine turned pirate, which I think is something we don't see anywhere near enough of in the series, and his time on Wano has gone on to put an even
even bigger twist on his general existence, which once again keeps me nice and captivated. In fact, I have to say as much as I was not a huge fan of the Caribo cover story because it was far, far too long, Drake showing up was pretty hype and by far the best part of it. And it's very much worth reading for that alone. So Drake is indeed a pretty cool dude, bro. Moving on now though, we have Capone Gang Beige in seventh place with 72 votes and fun story here. When the first generation was first introduced, or I guess they were called the Supernovas back then, but this guy was by far my least favorite member. I didn't take to his design, I didn't really like his abilities, and I thought that literally every other member outdid him in terms of sheer narrative presence. And then post time skip, my opinion changed entirely. From Zoe onwards, I love this guy, and I think that's a testament to how well Oda can handle and explore characters. Beige is at once a brutal, murderous mafia boss, but at the same time, he's also an adorable, loving family man, which is an interesting dichotomy that a lot of gangster-related drama explores, actually. So it was nice to see an element of that in One Piece. And what's more, I really enjoyed how, despite Beige's lack of physical ability, outside of Big Father, I guess, Oda still made him a threat worthy of being considered a contemporary of Luffy. Beige's danger comes in the form of intellect and planning, which is very rare to see amongst this group, and I greatly appreciate this particular member because of it. In sixth place now, a mere four votes ahead of Beige is Blackbeard, a man who to this day, people still kind of forget is a member of the worst generation. And I guess the key thing to remember in that regard is that the Supernovas and the worst generation are two different groups. I mean, they're 99% the same, only the latter includes Blackbeard while the Supernovas does not. And anybody who argues that Blackbeard is too old and should be considered part of Shanks' generation, well, Mad Monka Rouge is actually older than Blackbeard. So the worst generation is more about considering when pirates emerged and made a name for themselves rather than when they were born. As for Blackbeard though, it's hard to argue with him being in any place really, given that he is set up to be the ultimate antagonist of the series. However, he does also tend to be so profoundly dislikable that I really would not have been too surprised to see him in Dead Last. But at the same time, I also wouldn't have been too shocked to see him reaching close to the top of the list. So instead we've landed smack bang in the middle, a rank which I also suspect will change once we dive into the arc of darkness that is this man thing. But for now we will skip to fifth place, which certainly surprised me because here is Jewelry Bonnie. And wow, I did not think that she had this sort of legion of support behind her. Primarily because yeah, she is the member who we know by far the least about. Although to be fair, she does carry the most potential and pure intrigue. Thinking about it, if I was offered the chance to learn all there is to know about any of these particular members right here and now, Bonnie is without a doubt the person I would pick because anybody who can send fear into a man like Sakazuki deserves some serious attention. However, I do wonder if Bonnie would have reached this point here today without her brief involvement in the Reverie arc. I do think that that really helped solidify her intrigue surrounding Kuma, but even then I never would have predicted that she would be more popular than all but four members of the worst generation, at least according to this particular segment of fans anyway. And speaking of in fourth place, we have Eustace Kid with 151 votes, which hey, I actually would have thought would be much higher. In fact, I almost certainly expected Kid to be a top three contender, especially after having some time with him on Wano, but that was just not to be in this poll. In fact, with only 151 votes, he kind of puts in a token appearance, despite being quite probably the most profound rival of Luffy from the group. Kid has always been a personal favorite of mine though. There was something so grabbing about him during his initial introduction, as he was the only supernova with a bounty higher than that of Luffy, which really sparks the imagination because after everything that Luffy had done, to know that there was a similar being out there had me endlessly curious about Kid's personal journey. Although the difference is explained by having Kid be a far more brutal and destructive force than Luffy. Actually, probably not as destructive, definitely just more brutal. Luffy's pretty damn destructive. But once again, this is interesting. I would love to know the story of a more twisted Luffy. And out of everyone in this collective, I think that Kid commands the most respect apart from Luffy. He's clearly being primed to be something big and I cannot wait to see what that is. In third place though, we have a surprising appearance by the protagonist himself, Monkey D. Luffy with a massive leap in votes sitting at 485. So I'll say right now, all of the top three figures seem to be in a league of their own in terms of popularity. But Luffy sitting in third place is kind of wow. And really, I honestly expected him to be comfortably taking first place or at worst second place. In fact, when I was making the poll, I was tossing up over whether or not I should actually include Luffy because putting the protagonist in seemed a bit unfair to me. But in retrospect, I'm really glad I decided to keep him here because this is a fascinating result. There's not a whole lot to say about Luffy individually though that the 600 or so other videos on my channel haven't already covered. We all know why he's appealing as a character and quite possibly one of the greatest protagonists in all of media. As for who beat him though in second place is Trafalgar Law, who I will say if Luffy was going to be defeated in this poll, he is the man who I expected to do it. In my anecdotal experience with the One Piece fan base, Law has near universal popularity and I very rarely stumble across someone who does not like this character. And it's because he's just so incredibly solid. Fantastic design, mind-boggling devil fruit abilities, a captivating 
exploding past, a revenge quest, and a natural foil for Luffy, because when these two are together, it is like a classic comedy duo. Plus, he's also a swordsman, which will always act as a multiplier on the concept of popularity, which very, very intriguingly brings us to our first place position. And in a strange turn of events, the winner of this poll is in fact Zoro, which if we go with sword multiplication theory, makes a lot of sense because he does have three of them. So that's a very unfair advantage. But despite the fact that Zoro is my personal favorite character in the series, I really did not think that he would come anywhere near close to winning this poll. And in fact, I would have expected him to be in the bottom half. The worst generation is just so full of arresting characters that I often feel like Zoro gets lost in these figures as he does everywhere else. But it's a pretty undisputed win in this poll actually, with the whole 45 votes more than Law. And just to reiterate, 45 votes is what both Hawkins and Apu each received in total. So Zoro was ranked exactly one Hawkins above Law and almost two entire Hawkins above Luffy. However, I think the clearest message we can take from this experiment is the utter dominance of Luffy, Law, and Zoro. With a bigger sample size, I feel like these top three figures could be interchangeable. However, this result is pretty clear and they should always remain as the top three because the difference in vote quantity is pretty absurdly large between third and fourth place. There is just an entire chasm of votes between Kid and Law. And in the future, I might try this again to get a larger sample. But for now, there is a new poll up in the community section of the Crown Line Review. And this time around, I am asking who your favorite named members of the Revolutionary Army are. So please do go ahead and leave your input for that poll. But as for this video, look, you guys have spoken and Zoro is going to be crowned, at least temporarily, as the most popular member of the worst generation. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. But for now, this has been the Ground Line Review and I'll see you next time.